Today, cities are facing a, a lot of trouble. We see that only in UK, US, and Germany, the cost of traffic and congestion combined is almost half a trillion dollars on an annual basis. That's a huge cost that we need to take. Moreover, um, cities are getting um, crowded more and more. Population of, on Earth is getting more and more crowded. And this situation is going to be much, much, much worse in the future. And in order to understand how to solve the problem and what is the solution, we need to really understand what is the problem. Traffic is not the problem. Pollution is not our problem. Parking and limited parking space is not the problem. These are all severe symptoms of a much wider problem. The real challenge of cities that cities need to face in order to build a better mobility solution is moving people around. That's the challenge of cities. And that's what we need to solve for. So how do we optimize it? How do we make people movement much more efficient? There are three elements that need to be taken into account in order to build this um, uh, efficient people movement, which, by the way, none of them currently exist. The first one is versatility. We need a versatile mobility market, a variety of services. The second part, we need to give cities visibility of how people are moving around. The third thing is then optimize the mobility and people movement when you have the, the first two. These are the three elements. And I'll go one by one to explain what does it mean. Let's start with versatility. This is what we need in order to create efficiency. This is the first building block that we need to have. A variety of services, current companies, ride hailing, bike sharing, ride sharing, many different solutions. But currently, the market is quite the opposite. Currently, the market trend is to get more and more concentrated. We see that monopolies are getting wider and wider. We see players like Uber, the global player, and Lyft in the US, and Yandex in Russia, and Didi in China, and Grab in Southeast Asia, which actually divide the world between them and create a very concentrated market. They don't want to see this variety of services, and this is a trend. It's getting more and more concentrated. And we know that this concentrated market creates a lot of problems. We see, for example, in New York, where traditionally we had 20,000 taxis, now we have 80,000 uh, 80, more vehicles with Uber and Lyft combined, which creates a completely new problem. So these monopolies not only solve mobility, and people movement efficiency, they now add to this problem a different layer. So we need to solve it. In Here Mobility, we launched the concept of an open global mobility marketplace in order to build a healthy mobility market that can bridge mo mobility demand and supply together. So the concept is very simple. It's a platform that allows every mobility service provider to get accessible accessibility to their services worldwide, globally, openly. Every mobility service provider can be taxis, public transport, current companies, bike sharing, car sharing, everyone, helicopters, airlines. If you provide the ability to move from A to B, you can now have a platform where you can sell your good, which is going from A to B, in a global market. So that's the concept. That's what we released five months ago at the CES. And we see that adoption of market, of this concept, is unbelievably fast. We see that within five months, we have triple-digit number of suppliers already joined our platform. 
that covers more than 120 cities already because they understand that in order to build a better future, you need to have a variety of services accessible on a, at a global scale. So we expand very, very fast. But even if we will be able to solve it, and this is what we're doing right now, it's not enough. In order to build a mobility and efficient way to move people around, you need to give cities the ability to see how people are actually moving around. And currently, cities are quite blind. Cities doesn't see people movement. This is what cities actually see. They see traffic patterns. And it's like it, it's only the symptom. It's like a doctor having a patient and can only measure the fever of a patient. This is what they're seeing. In order to solve the traffic problem, they need to understand the real problem. They need to understand people's movement. It's like a doctor needs to take blood test to the patient. But as I said, currently they are blind. The reason they cannot have access um, um, to the data is because the market is so fragmented. There are so many different mobility service providers. Each one has its own API, has its own protocol. It's very hard to connect to every mobility service provider in order to get the data and in order to understand how people are actually moving around in a the city. There is a missing link there. And why is it? The answer is within this box. This is a standard container. And the ability of mankind to come with a standard way to describe the size of a container, what would be the, the height of it, the width of it, and the length of it, is the one single thing that enabled the world trade we know it right now. Because once you have standard way, or a standard uh, container and a standard size, you can standardize the entire ecosystem. You can then build railroads that fit to this size. And you can build trains and cranes and ships and, every, and trucks and everything towards this one standard size. And the standardization is what is missing in the mobility space as well. Currently, there is no standardization. But we're as a marketplace, as a mobility marketplace, de facto create this standardization. We already connect mobility services to one place, all the mobility services to one place, and we can now offer cities the ability to have this kind of accessibility, and now they can start understanding how people are moving around. We can see a simulator that, uh, in this simulator, what we will see is people movement. This is different than traffic. This is what we try to optimize. So on the upper right side, you can see the clock. And it will describe a day at the life of London. And the dots uh, um, are the people that are moving around. And the color indicates the different mobility services. Now let's take a look. Towards the morning, more people are crowded and try to get into uh, the city center. And <laughs> <coughs> and we see how the traffic is building <coughs> and how it slows down. And in the afternoon, people are want to get out of the city center. But this is not traffic. This is people movement that we need to understand in order to optimize. It, there's a big difference because once we understand that we need to take action on human behavior, that's a completely different game because that's what we need. We need to optimize people's movement. We need to give incentives to people to move around differently. We need to take a holistic view of people's movement. And a lot of time when you try to incentivize people, you get a different result than what you were hoping for. There is an example that was described in Dan Ariely's book uh, about a daycare for kids that had a problem. They had a problem that parents occasionally came late to, to pick up their kids. So they tried to deal with it, and they did something very logical. What they did in the daycare, they said, OK, we will give a fine if you come late to pick up your kids. The result of it 
was a huge surge of people that came late to pick up their kids. Because apparently, for people, it was much easier to pay the fine than to get the angry look from the kindergartner that was angry about coming late. So people and human behavior is complicated. And in order to influence it, we need to have real-time access and real-time data to understand what is the consequences of our trying to influence in them. And then we can start optimizing and take measures of putting tools uh, to, to optimize their movement. Sometime we will want to, let's say, increase parking prices in the city. Sometime we will want to add uh, another transit line. Sometime we might even tell to the people, you know what? Don't move. Stay where you are. Ten more minutes at work. You will get home faster because then we can orchestrate the people movement much, much better. I strongly believe that the window of opportunity is quite small. We have a window of opportunity um, um, in the near future to shift the market to a much better place. Before I joined Here Mobility and, and built uh, Here Mobility, uh, I spent six years at Waze. I built there the whole data entity, big data analytics, data science, and I saw this big shift in the market and how the market and, and uh, uh, the shift of paradigm from car ownership to mobility as a service and this whole entity, this whole market, uh, evolved so fast. And I think that we are now at a tipping point of time where our actions will determine a lot of how the end future will look like. If we will find a good way to collaborate between ourselves, to find ways to help cities to become smart cities, if we will find ways together to optimize and to make people movement much more efficient, we can win the mobility game. There is, this is not a game over yet. We still have the chance to turn it into something much more, much better than it is right now. I encourage every one of you to take a look at uh, what we can offer at Here Mobility to smart cities and to turn them into smart cities. How can we help them create this missing link between, between what they currently see as traffic and people movement, and how can we build a much better future together? Thank you.